I'm Lisa Lefebvre, I'm Curator of Light and Language here at Lismore Castle Arts, and I'm Executive Director of Holtzmanson Foundation. I'm talking to you from New Mexico, where we're based, and you can probably hear behind me birds, cars, all kinds of activities. And in so many ways, this is part of this exhibition, Light and Language. It's an exhibition that's thinking through the ways in which art encourages us, enables us to look harder, listen harder, and think deeper about the world around us. And this is what I love so much about art. It gets us to think about questions. It gets us to take apart assumptions. Holtzmanson Foundation is an artist endowed foundation and we look after the creative legacies of two artists, Nancy Holt, whose work is the focus of this exhibition, and her husband Robert Smithson. Nancy Holt is an artist who was born in 1938 and she passed away in 2014. Across five decades, she expanded, extended what art could be and where it could be found. A creative legacy is when an artist's work vibrates across history. And here at Lismore, Nancy Holt's work is in the company of five wonderful artists working today, A.K. Burns, Matthew Day Jackson, Dennis McNulty, Charlotte Moth, and Katie Patterson. Light and language. So these are qualities that we use to try and find our place in the world. Language, we use it so often without thinking. It's a structure, it's an approximation, it's a system, and it often fails us. The artist John Cage had some really wonderful advice about language. He said, pay attention to the spaces between the words. It's a process that will be invigorating, electrifying, illuminating. We literally see the world around us with light. If we wake up in the middle of the night and want a glass of water, we put the light on so we don't fall over furniture. There's electric light, but then there's the light cycles of the sun, the stars, the moon. Light is in language. We use it metaphorically. We talk about shining light on a particular topic. Nancy Holt started making work in 1966. Interestingly, she didn't train as an artist she trained as a biologist. Her first works used the systems of language and the spaces between the words. She made concrete poems, works that are about the structure and the content of language. In 1966, when she started making work, Nancy Holt was working as an assistant editor at Harper's Bazaar magazine. I find this fascinating. Her job was to copy edit texts. So she made sure that the writers were saying what they wanted to say. She made sure that the reader could understand the words. And she thought about language on the page, meaning in space. One of the first works you'll see in this exhibition is Electrical System by Nancy Holt, a work she made in 1982. And this is the first time this work has been presented since 1982. It's an arcing electrical conduit system. This is standard electrical conduit, and it holds a constellation of light bulbs. Nancy Holt talked about this work being like a fountain of light when you walk through it. She was really interested in how this work connects. She talked about this work making us aware that the light we live with 
is part of a vast invisible system, a system that connects us beyond where we are physically. Within this first room, where electrical system is shown, you'll see two works by Katie Patterson. These works are part of a body of work called Ideas, and there's five of them in total in Light and Language. So what's an idea? An idea is a light bulb, a moment of something to come, a becoming artwork. For example, the universe's light switched off one by one. What would that be like? It would be glorious and terrifying. But we can see this work. It is evoked by the language. There's another work that's also extending the power system, a sculpture by Dennis McNulty, and it spells out the lyrics of Bruce Springsteen's 1982 Atlantic City. So it was recorded the very same year that Nancy Holt made Electrical System. And there's another connection here, another network. Nancy Holt grew up in New Jersey, and for her, place was really important. That sense of how we situate ourselves. You'll see a work called Trail Markers in this exhibition. In 1969, Nancy Holt traveled to England and she went to Dartmoor and she came across something that she'd never seen before. Small orange dots that mark out the trail for hikers. It's a language, it's a system, it's a way of guiding you through landscape. And for her, seeing it with new eyes enabled her to see this as an artwork in waiting, a ready-made artwork that needed just to be photographed. Among electrical system, there's another idea by Katie Patterson all the shadow at this moment carved on earth. What might all the shadow at this moment carved on earth look like? When we have light, we always have shadow. We have limits to light. That limit makes us more aware of the illumination. Illumination can be extreme. We know we shouldn't stare into the sun. But we humans with our destructive tendencies, we've tried to make light brighter than the sun with military technology. Matthew Day Jackson's commissioned family portrait comprises 82 photographs of the artist and his family. And it's taken with an incredibly powerful camera designed in the early 1950s specifically to capture the light of military weapons. The camera will capture this extreme light to enable flaws in explosions to be tracked, to be improved. Just opposite this work, is Nancy Holt's concrete poem titled, A World Through the Circle. Focusing vision to the circle fascinated Nancy Holt. And she made a series of sculptures called Locators. And there's two of them here in Light and Language. They're sculptures made from standing standard plumbing equipment. And they're to be looked at through one eye. These pipes get us to look at things we don't normally pay attention to. So one of them is pointing to a corner, a corner that's nothing special. Another one is pointing to a mirror. So when you look through it, you see your own eye. What does that do to see yourself looking? You can also see yourself looking in Charlotte Moth's circular sculpture blue reflecting the greens. This is outside in the castle grounds and it's been made specifically for this exhibition. 
it reflects the growing green of the garden. And it's just a wondrous object. So it's like a magnet. You can't help but find yourself drawn to it. And then you see the blue reflecting the green. And you see yourself. You see yourself situated in space. One of Nancy Holt's best known works is Sontanes. It was made between 1973 and 1976, and it's in the Great Basin Desert in Utah. It comprises four large concrete cylinders, and it's there in the Great Basin Desert with no buildings, no power lines to interrupt it. This is a work that, as Nancy Hort describes, brings the stars down to earth. Each of these large cylinders are perforated with four different constellations that let in light from the sun and from the moon. Two of the cylinders are perfectly positioned so that you can see the sun setting and rising on the winter and summer solstices. There's something fascinating about this moment when nature is in balance. In 2017, that was the last time in this part of the world that there was a total solar eclipse. Wonderful solar events that are so tempting to look at. A.K. Burns has three works in this exhibition, two sculptures, The Dispossessed in the Gardens, and one 16 millimeter film that captures this total solar eclipse. We know that we shouldn't look at the sun, and we also know that when there is a total solar eclipse, the best way to do it is to look through a pinprick to see the reflection of the light. So the reflection is to see the limits, the curved shadows on the earth. Language and light is so often a pair of concepts defined by its limits. There's two video works here that Nancy Holt made with Richard Serra, where you can see miscommunication in action, a looping example of audio trouble when words are fed back and repeat the edges of conversation. This is an exhibition that's concerned with ways that we think about our being in the world and our hope with it is that perhaps it raises questions Perhaps it encourages us to look differently, to look at limits, to look beyond the limits of our known horizons, and to think, because this is why art matters.